Welcome back to Dark Cinema Recaps. Today we're carrying on recapping the Scream franchise with what I originally thought was the worst <laughs> Scream, but yeah. upon further reflection and looking deep inside myself, Scream 3 kicks ass! It's not it, as bad it's, as it's, it's a bit it goofy. <laughs> It's, it's a goofy yeah. old film. It's no worse than any of that dumb singing shit that they did in Scream 2. Yeah. And I underestimated yeah. you, Scream 3. You certainly aren't the red-headed stepchild that I originally took you for. Whilst Wes Craven and Marco Baltromi returned to direct, production was troubled, including script rewrites in occasionally when pages were only ready to film on a day of filming. The scheduling difficulties with the main cast Principal photography took place in July to September 1999, and the ending was refilmed in January 2000 for a February 2000 release. Other issues with Scream 3 at the time were down to the real world events of Columbine, which made the death scenes were toned down massively. The yeah. gore, they reduced it to the point where they originally wanted none, but obviously that couldn't happen. So it's crazy that when, you know, school shootings were a big yeah. thing and like not just a Thursday. Mm -hmm. So it all got tweaked around a lot for that. So Scream 3 should not be anywhere near as good as what it is. Cotton Weary, now the host of a successful talk show, is contacted by Ghostface, who demands to know what the whereabouts of Sidney Prescott. When Cotton refuses to cooperate, Ghostface breaks... Ghostface breaks into his home and attacks his girlfriend, Christine. The voice changer thing is dumb, I hate it. <laughs> I take back everything I said. The voice changer thing is so shit. It's just, oh I my, hate it, it so much. The rails like, with so quickly. all of my beans. He just does the voice perfectly. <laughs> Cotton rushes home, only to forego Ghostface to kill Christine, then Cotton. Detective Mark Kincaid contacts Gail Weathers to discuss the recent murders, prompting her to travel to Hollywood. There, she finds Dewey working as an advisor on the set of Stab 3, the third film in the series based on the Ghostface murders. Ghostface kills Stab 3 actress Sarah Darling, causing production of the film to be halted. The remaining cast, along with Dewey, Gail, gather at the home of Jennifer Joel, the actress playing Gail in Stab 3. Ghostface murders her bodyguard. He then uses a ga gas leak to cause an explosion, which kills actor Tom Prince. Oh, <laughs> this is like... It's, it's just the whole thing, the, the having the party, <laughs> and well, not look, really the party, yeah. and then they all, the they meeting, know, everybody's they, there. You know that yeah. Ghostface is around, and then the fax machine starts going crazy. <laughs> they get killed by a fax, and the gas was left on, he had to find a lighter, oh. and oh god, it was... <sighs> I don't take back everything I said just yet. <laughs> I do genuinely love this film. It just does not start very well. Sydney's living in seclusion as a crisis counsellor for an abused women's hotline. Try saying that ten times. Fearing another killer may strike, having uncovered Sydney's location, the killer begins taunting her by phone using the fucking voice changer to sound exactly <laughs> like her deceased mother, Maureen Prescott. Forcing Sydney out of hiding and drawing her to Hollywood. Martha meets a sister of Sydney's murdered friend, Randy, who, as well, there was, they were originally yeah. going to have it that he survived the attack in Scream 2, which just, no, no, he, he got dead, dead. Yeah, and this know. is a perfect cameo as well. Visits Sydney and the others to deliver a videotape that Randy made before his death, warning them that the rules of a horror film do not apply to anyone in the third and final film of a trilogy and that any of them including sydney could die now he also said that at this point the killer's got superhuman powers so <laughs> take everything he says with a big old pinch of salt sydney is later attacked by ghostface at the at a movie set forcing the police to hold her at the station dewey gail jennifer and the remaining cast Angelina and Tyson attend a birthday party for Stab 3's director's Roman Bridger. After Gail discovers Roman's body in the basement, Ghostface attacks the group, killing Angel Angelina. Then Tyson with the best kill of the movie. He snaps his freaking neck! <laughs> the rug! We, we, the, that stage is perfect! I love it so much! It I mean, he doesn't very actually good, good, die yeah. exactly at yeah. that point, but that's stage four where he just kind of does a backflip straight onto his head, yeah. onto the floor. Just, oh, it's insane. It is such a good one. Then Jennifer. 
The killer then orders Sydney to the mansion to save Gail and Dewey. By the help of the fucking voice changer. When Sydney arrives, Goface lures her inside to where Gail and Dewey are bound and gagged. As Sydney's freeing them, Ghostface appears, though Sydney gains the upper hand using a hidden gun to fight him off. King Cage shows up, but is knocked unconscious by Ghostface. Sydney flees and hides in a secret screening room, where she is discovered by Ghostface, who reveals himself to be Roman, who su having survived being shot by wearing a bulletproof vest. Roman admits to being Sydney's half brother, born to their mother, Maureen, when she was an actress in Hollywood. Years prior, he tried reuniting with her, only for her to reject him due to him being a product of rape. Bitter over the rejection, Roman began stalking her, filming all the men she philandered with and showing to Billy Loomis the footage of Billy's father with Maureen, which motivated Billy and Stu Macker to kill her, thus setting off a string of murders in Sydney's hometown and at her college. I'm a director. <laughs> when he discovers how much fame Sydney had attracted due to those events, Roman snapped and lured Sydney out of hiding, planning to kill her and frame her for the murders. After Roman kills stab producer John Milton, whom he accuses of being his biological father and one of their mother's rapists. Now, yeah. Roman is a wet wipe. Like, oh, throughout the whole yeah. film, absolute fucking wet wipe. Yeah. But the monologue at the end is on point. Yeah. It's it's genuinely so just one of the killers, fantastic like, reasonings. It was a very very good one. It it just was. It was reason. just yeah. it was just really really well done. And I kind of thought you know like say you look at Roman throughout this yeah. whole thing like he ain't shit he has nothing, yeah. and then he drops like one of the best horror yeah. monologues of all time. And then Sydney just shuts <laughs> it the fuck down. It's fantastic. Like, fuck yeah, exactly. After all that, she's laughing at him, yeah. man. Sydney denounces him and his motives, provoking an enraged Ray Roman to engage Sydney in a fight which ends with Roman shooting Sydney in the chest. However, Sydney survives the shot and stabs Roman multiple times, revealing him to that she too was wearing a bulletproof vest. They love bulletproof vests in Screen 3. Oh. They've got loads of them. They feed the children on bulletproof Everybody's vests. They're them. everywhere. <laughs> As Dewey and Gail arrive, a screaming Roman suddenly resurfaces with a knife. Sydney tells, yells at Dewey to shoot Roman in the head, which Dewey does, finally killing him. Now, the perfect part about that is he shoots him about 16 <laughs> times in the chest. And Sydney <laughs> is screaming at him. Head, shoot him in the head! head. Shoot him. <laughs> this is what I mean. This, I, I fucking love this film. Later at Sydney's house, Dewey proposes to Gail, who accepts. Sydney returns from a walk and leaves her gates which were previously shown to be alarmed. Open. She enters her home and is invited to join Dewey, Gale and Kincaid to watch a movie as she goes to join the others. Her front door blows open behind her, but she walks away, leaving it as it is. So, a Scream 3, yeah. and that is the original trilogy yeah. wrapped as well. So, <laughs> Scream 3, low he not necessarily my favorite no. one but i th there were so there were so many because of what happened at the same time there was only so much they could do with this film because they had to really be conscious of what was going on around them. there was there was a and, lot of yeah, yeah i mean and I think real world events well. and whatnot it, it did kind of hamper it a little bit because it's I, not a very violent no. film and at i think all. that really put a shocker and put some fans off this film being this one but when you go to rewatch it, you realise that, hang on, it's not bad. It's not brilliant. It's better, it's better than not it's bad. Like, yeah. The thing is, if you take a look at the original Scream yes. trilogy as a whole, first Scream, fantastic. Mm. The first half of Scream 2 is yeah. great. The second half's fucking the hopeless. <laughs> the first half of Scream 3 yeah. is fucking hopeless, but the second half, and then yeah. there was that little, that little in the middle where I like I don't think away, there's actually yeah. a bad Scream film after watching it. I'd have no. said this was the worst one, mm -hmm. but... There are so many parts. It's like when they're yeah. on the movie set and Sydney's fighting Ghostface on the movie set. Yes. It's amazing because they're on yeah. a set of Sydney's house. A, they're a in the bedroom. The film. Yeah. yeah, and they're having this fight. She opens the doors. It kind of fall, but instead of falling out the house, it just falls onto another set, onto <laughs> yes. another bed, and it's onto another thing. Yeah, another area. it's, it's yeah. really, really good. Yes, the fax machine killer is fucking stupid. <laughs> the voice changer makes yeah. me die inside. The thing is, the voice changer. They've tried so many times to say this technology is here. This technology, this could do, but it's not. 
it's just so outlandish but i think it works for scream to have it so outlandish it's outlandish now never yeah. mind 23 no, years but ago that's what i mean i think it's so synonymous with scream now that when you re-watch re it it's not as bad as what you first it's just when they're on the yet. phone and he's trying to bait perfect, he's trying to bait sydney yeah. in and it's a perfect it's a rendition yeah. representation of their voice which is just such fucking horseshit. <laughs> like all the crazy things yeah. that go on in the screen movies that's that's the one yeah. that me that just, just pushes me over the edge and so that was the original trilogy yeah. wrapped so next week we're going to have all of these videos put together without the added nonsense of us yes. chatting shit over the top of it and then we'll be back in two weeks for yeah. scream four yeah the lesson that oh <laughs> Oh, the last in the Wes Craven yes. series before we get to the new ones. And yeah, the original Scream trilogy is yeah. arguably the best horror movie trilogy of all time. Mm. There's a three. Yeah. It's, I can't it's think of there. any other ones yeah. that are as consistently yes, good. Yes, as consistently good. It, it does tick those Because that's one thing with Scream. You know you're going to get some decent kills. You know you're going to get some meta commentary. Yes. And you know there's going to be something in there you think, what the hell? What the fuck have I just watched? <laughs>